Today, once more, they will replenish themselves, cheat death again, through the power of their source. Matt Stone, 180DegreeHealth.com Hey, it's Matt Stone from 180 Degree Health. It's early in the morning. I have to do a video before I leave for a couple of days, uh, bright and early. And uh, yeah, so if I sound a little scratchy, a little tired, there's, hey, there's a reason for it. Imagine that. But, you know, it was uh, actually interesting because it reminded me of the fact that I've been doing some different things with my sleep lately, just to see what all that does. And I've been sort of intuitive sleeping <laughs> and basically staying awake until I feel really tired and then going to bed and staying asleep until I feel completely and totally refreshed and wanting to actually get up and get out of bed. Now this is pretty bizarre because my sleeping hours have become pretty strange. I've been staying up way later than normal and I've been sleeping way, way later than normal in a much larger quantity than normal as well. Um, I've noticed right away that I have to drink way more water or else I get too hot. I'm literally like, one of, one of the things that I've found really fascinating, I might write about this or talk about it in a future video, but if the cellular energy concentration gets too high and I get my hands and feet actually get so hot that they're burning, I tend to have trouble going to sleep. I have almost, I have these like restless legs and stuff like that. So I may do something on restless legs, but I, since I've been sleeping more, I've been much warmer and I actually have to drink a lot more water. You know, I'm drinking maybe, I went from drinking hardly any water at all to needing a couple of quarts at least. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's warmer. It's summertime and everything, but you know what? It's it's not actually warmer here than it was in Florida two months ago. I'm in Reno right now. So sleep, we know sleep is one of those things that's uh, probably the most inherently de-stressing activity that we can do. And there's a huge insulin sensitizing effect from getting more sleep. Um, it's just absolutely shuts down those stress hormones more than anything else. And sleep is very pro-metabolic because of those qualities. So I've just been sleeping a ton. Uh, I would say I average about nine hours a night, whereas in the past, maybe seven hours over the if I you know averaged all the nights sleep together over the last five years, I would say I was averaging more like seven hours. Well, I just increased that by two hours, and that increase is just massive. It's very very significant. And I don't know if you have the ability to sleep that much, maybe you have a sleep problem that forbids you from actually being able to stay asleep for that long. But I have found waiting until I'm absolutely exhausted to be pretty helpful because I fall asleep really quickly. I do think part of insomnia's you know, problem is that people are trying to go to bed when they're not that sleepy and then they become mental about the fact that they can't sleep and it reinforces the fact that they can't sleep and then they start to have those sort of self-defeating thoughts about, geez, I'm so sick of having insomnia, and then they end up staying up all night. At least I get into that pattern myself, and I don't I don't have a lot of problems with sleep, but I, it does get in my head if I have a couple nights where I have trouble sleeping. So anyway, I've been thinking about sleep a lot lately. That's my little sleep experiment. I, I do tend to think that when it comes to de-stressing and raising metabolism, it's probably better to resort to getting more sleep first than it is to actually start to reach to food to shut down your stress hormones. I mean, obviously, if you need to be eating pizza and ice cream and, you know, who knows what else, potato chips, to shut down your stress hormones, well, you can accumulate some body fat in that process, especially when you're starting out in a low, with a low metabolic rate. So if there's any way to rely more on sleep than food, especially in the early stages when you're starting out at 95, 96 degrees <clears throat> uh, for your body temperature most of the time, then uh, hey, that's probably good advice. So I may work that into future editions of diet recovery and some things like that. Uh, just especially starting out because I'm having people just start out overfeeding. I may have sort of a sleep phase, an oversleeping phase to sort of reset the body and putting in, you know, in a less fattening mode, so to speak, 
and then start to add in the food to take it the rest of the way. Um, so anyway, we'll see what uh, that develops in, into in the future. I wanted to let everybody know that next weekend, Sunday, the June 24th, anybody living in Northeast California, I will be appearing in Grass Valley at the Green Life Eco Fest, which is a pretty funny uh, venue with a lot of uh, you know people with funny names, and it's kind of a kind of a hippie type hipster type of venue, but it should be pretty interesting and. It was funny because they told me I had to do a workshop, like, last minute. I mean, th maybe they mentioned this before, but it didn't register. And I knew I had to do a talk on Sunday, and then they say, what is the title of your workshop? And I said, workshop? I felt like Pedro Sanchez uh, when he was running for school president in Napoleon Dynamite, and they told me he had to do a skit. I did not have to do a skit. A skit? Uh, so, yeah. Um, I just had a really great idea for what I could do for the workshop, and... Now I'm really excited to get people to come and check it out. I'm going to do something called Gulp Fiction, the ugly truth about the health food fad, and talk about a number of different substances. And the stuff that people think of as health food, I'm going to break that down and you know sort of equalize that. The stuff that people think is junk food, I'm going to sort of build that up and sort of equalize that so that people stop knowing everything about what is and is not healthy and they get it, you know, past that mindset where foods can be neatly filed into unhealthy and healthy categories and get them thinking a little bit more intelligently about stuff. So I'll be talking about salt and fat and sugar and praising all those things and breaking down things like, um, you know, the health of whole grains and nuts and seeds and all this kind of stuff to just sort of help get people, you know, the plant fats obviously need a little bit of a smack. Uh, in that community because people just they worship plants as if they're these holy substances and anything that comes from an animal is unhealthy yeah I mean that's obviously got to be reorganized somehow I'll be talking a lot about raw foods bashing the you know raw foods and fasting I'm building up calories and high calorie diets and a lot of those things to just help people be able to tune into their natural biofeedback a little bit more easily and be able to choose uh, with more of an open mind and use their own intuition in terms of what they actually need to get their bodies working correctly. And of course take a lot of the attention off of the food and put a lot more attention on how the body works and let them go at that uh, more objectively without having these paranoid feelings of like I'm going to have a heart attack if I eat any butter or other ridiculous stuff. So anyways, uh, Grass Valley, California, June 24th, anybody who that's within driving range please come and check it out it should be a lot of fun okay that's it for this video i'll catch you guys on wednesday thanks again this is matt stone from 180 degree health subscribe to the 180 degree health channel now or you will be abducted by lesbian nazi hookers from outer space and forced into a weight loss program it doesn't matter what you had for lunch just eat it eat